Oh my god, I have a whole professional here. What's up? <laughs> Sir, do you mind uh, assisting me here? 16570 Explorers, 216 Explorers, 226 Explorers. So the best thing that I can do for him is show him every single piece in there and why he should or shouldn't buy it. The Explorer 2, why did you go with the Explorer 2? Um, it's the perfect size for me. Everything I'm looking for and the new ones are just hideous. I'm back. I'm coming stronger than ever. Roba, how much is this brace? 13 carats. How much is this? 13 okay. five, That's really used. That's it. Yeah. What are we left with? Like we do these favors and we get we get stuck holding the dick bag. Is that I, uh, <laughs> that's why that's why we send stuff in and we inspect it if it's on consignment to make sure it's good to go. We made it we made an offer pending on certain things. It pending came in twenty nineteen bracelet stretched as hell, beat this stuff like it's beat up, broken box. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. guy make, gets to make one hundred twenty thousand. We we get to make ten maybe, and then have to absorb trades because nine out of ten of shit comes in trades. Like where's what's the point? The point is let's write it up, let's service it, and I'll renegotiate like you told me to, sir. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to touch this up without. You know what I'm saying? Because then, because then, what happens is, is we're 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 doing something that he didn't tell us to do. It could ruin the integrity of the watch. Should we not sell it? I don't want to touch it up until we have like a, f a finite price. So what you're saying is you want me to call? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, I you know, usually usually his stuff is in mint mint condition. This thing came in. It's it's really used. Thirty four years old. We gotta stop, like you know, just just being a charity case here. Oh, my friend, my good client, you know, we always get shit in the stick. Always, guy gets to make one hundred twenty thousand dollars. We get to, you know, make maybe net seven thousand after all is said and done. So what are you saying? I'm, I'm saying like, look, look, we got the watch to be shit. He's not gonna be like, let me get it back because I'm sure he shopped this thing to death. Me and Marco have a process here. Even if something comes on consignment, regardless of how good the customer is, if it's not to our par. We shouldn't take it in for that price and then pay the brunt later. We rarely ever do this. Like, well, we when we quote a price, we try to honor it as best as we can. But again, pending inspection, right? With used watches, it becomes yeah. very because what happens is, is like, okay, now you have a high complicate, you have a perpetual calendar that's four years old. We got to take the watch apart to polish it, right? What if something goes wrong? What if something, you know? They're, oh, they're, we got to check it. Regardless. Service costs, maintenance, polish, they're, they're just, bracelet. They're stress, just like yeah. domino effect, effective things. Like he gets to make like this is this this is my my issue. He gets to make one twenty, we get to make nothing, and we do all the work. This is a push and pull that me and Roman have all the time, right? And I always end up somehow being the bad guy, but I'm also the guy that's trying to protect us in every which way possible. Roman is a very nice guy. He likes to make promises to people. The problem with promises is sometimes promises need to work both ways. We have to be protected. I have no issue with doing favors and helping our friends and clients out and even other dealers. But if we get the short end of the stick every single time, then that's an issue. That guy gets to make 120000 on it. And we get to make probably seven. Put that on our books, take in trades, pay out commissions, pay out people to list it, pay out people to polish it. I just, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's the point. It's unacceptable. When we make an offer on something and it comes in and it's not to the condition that we anticipated, we gotta go back to the drawing board and revisit the price. <laughs> So we wanted to change up the scenery and go to New York City to do some watch shopping and also visit our friends at the Watch Finder for an event that they were hosting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to you live here on the 47th Street. This is the block to be. This is the block where things happen on a daily. Billions and billions of dollars being traded. Millions and millions of product being traded. This has become one ridiculously humongous trade show. Let's see if we're going to trade some stuff. Yes. What do you think this watch is? Um, Ready? I'm, I'm gonna do a slow wrist roll. Ready? I'll say royal oak. Yo, <laughs> what's this? When you get a bunch of licks and you put them together and you get this. Who came up with this idea? Who came up with this? I can't be seen wearing this. This has more hair than I do. Is, hey Nina, this is nice. <laughs> no, really. How about I'm just gonna do one of these? I mean, I can't. When life throws you a Jeffrey, stroke a fairy wall. Any old Breguet? 80s, early 90s. You want this? 50, 36? 5035. How much? Uh, 21. Papers? Yeah. I have a few. I try to buy it with papers because yeah. anal guys, they want papers. It's a price, but how much is the alarm? 
That one there, 15,000. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's How old silver. is this? You ever see a silver case? No, I didn't. Rare. Yeah, that's pretty rare. This is what, 40s? Yeah, we're going down the 30s. 30s? And it's, but it's underlined too, you know, it's air, I see it, I see it, yeah, I see it. Yeah, number one. How much? Uh, 17. Mind if I take a picture? Sure, sure. Silver case, that's insane. Stuff like this? How much? Uh, 3,800. I mean, they're up like 6,000, I know, great f***ing watch. I have one like full set. I was gonna throw it in the back of the safe. Collector came up, bought it, should have kept it. You want this, 6,800? That's just ridiculous. Full-blown perpetual calendar. A full-blown perpetual calendar. I mean, it's going to take me six years to reset no, I just it. Sold, I sold one, but it had a deployment yesterday for 77. I believe it. Mm -hmm. You don't have anything with it. I, I have one that I paid 9,000. It's complete. Yeah. That's Adrian's department. Yes, sir. You know, how much? I pay a lot. Okay. Time, so that's why I was asking like, about how much you think it's like. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not paying right now, but this is worth about 32, give or take, and this is worth about 35. All right, I appreciate it. No problem. So here's an example of a guy who said I paid strong for something, right? At the time, he said. Three weeks for that. So if you still have the watches and you're coming to me to ask me the prices, what are the chances of me actually buying them? Probably second to none. Especially, especially when you ask for a price and you don't get one. Yeah, exactly. What you guys looking for? I'm not looking for shit. We're looking for good. We're looking for good weather. Is what we're looking for. You know what I mean? Adrian, would you like a 6315 good deal? I just bought it. Yeah. I don't have a good relationship with AP right now. The price. We have a good relationship. We're not on talking terms right now. I'll flip it to one price. Thirty-five thousand. It's a reasonable. It's scrambled. By the way, reasonable. But this thing is a beat, man. They're going for like thirty-eight. This is very polished. Well, this thing had a makeover already. No, it hasn't been polished. It hasn't been polished. I just bought it from the private. So? Yeah, this guy, uh... Yeah. Complete set, scrambled though. Oh, Comes up to us and says, Hey, I got a good deal on Swatch, which wasn't a horrible deal, wasn't... This is whatever deal, right? Because I just got it. So what? What does that mean? You know, this watch is probably two, three years old since it came out. I go, it's polished, and it clearly was. I mean, it looked like aluminum foil. And uh, he's like, no, because some, some owner had it. I'm like, yeah, so what? That doesn't mean it wasn't polished at some point. This is the funny antics sometimes about the street. Adrian, how long do you think it will be till the street dies? Die. I mean, they're buying up ch blocks chunk by chunk. Yeah, they're building, they're putting up new buildings. Yeah. That corner's already taken. They're pushing, they're pushing a lot of these guys out. Before the street was booming, you couldn't get, you couldn't get a piece of anything on the street before. So 47th Street was a gold mine back in the day. Yes, there still is a lot of gold on the street, don't get me wrong, but back in the day, you couldn't get a window for like $125,000 key money. Today, that method of business is dying down and the street's getting a little, little, little shaky. What is that, Adrian? Huh? What is that? That is a Roman watch. Oh, a, I, do, I do know what that is. I'll give you the brand. You at least in our deed? Yes. I do know what that is. Well, so tell me what it is. Let's see the sardine. This is a... Uh, sardine what? See the sardine mm -hmm. that um, is damn near impossible to sell anywhere more expensive than uh, 30 cents on a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's, it, what's it actually called? I don't know. I don't remember. Astrolabium. Astro? They had the tellurium, astrolabium, and planetarium. Oh, it was a trio. Don't ask me how I remember that useless piece of information. <laughs> Looks like it's cracked. See the crystal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The lines? Yeah. Planetarium Copernicus. This is a newer version, actually. The original, the original was smaller. Mars, Venus, penis, I mean. Collectible Daytona. Right here, on the street, on the block. No one has these cereal over this. Wow. Crisp. Beautiful. You interested? Not at the moment, but thank you. Sure, pleasure. Five thousand, you want? Interested? How five much? Thousand? Five thousand. Well, so five thousand is a different story, but it's it. What's up, brother? It's nice to see you. Wow. Uh, this this right here, boys and girls, what we call a uh, funeral home. <laughs> so when they bury people, they pick a watch, they put it on. <laughs> but you know what the funny part is? I'm laughing 
This has the best margin. Because when you do sell, when you make, you actually make a profit. This is good. This is nice. It's nice, yeah. Actually, can I say something? Let me see that box. Now we're talking. Yeah, is that period correct, Roman? Yeah. It is? 6,000 was all? I can't. I'll tell you why. Honestly, I don't want to... All right. Because I'm going to take this watch and fix this with it. That's what I bought it. Yeah. You know, so I bought this one for $6,000. I didn't know it doesn't work. Oh, yeah. That one we bought it with real life. And I paid $17 for this one. But together, I would sell it for 67 bottom price. Okay, good. So I was out on the street hunting for some of these neo-vintage pieces. Came across two Blancpain annual calendars at a smoke of a price. These are not the greatest ones, but certainly is a lot of value. Again, you want to find a mid repeat, a perpetual calendar chrono. I get all that, but they're not that easy to find. So it doesn't mean that the lower totem stuff, i.e. less price stuff, will not be something that's good for the future. Hence, I bought them both. Wouldn't it be cheaper to order the bracelet? 30 grand? No, Really? Bro, AP bracelet is, is 30 something, right? Okay, so it's a gold bracelet, I mean. The client paying an arm and a leg for the watch. We're trying to figure out a way to get him out of this watch as painless as possible via returning him back to its original state. Think about a steel Nautilus link versus an AP link. Yeah, exactly. Uh, see, I don't think about this. I have these friends that motion in time to have every link. Oh, but it's they, just, they just charge me double and they put it on the watch. <laughs> if you had to put a number on it, hey, I'm not going to hold you to it. Off top of yeah. my head, I think you could probably take everything out and fill it back up around 30. Okay. And then, then we could go the real world, Don't bring it back to life and probably run another maybe 10. Don't think so. So 40 grand. 40 grand. Adrian, so oh. it's not so bad. I mean, he's saying 40 grand. I mean, but the way I figure is like the watch is worth 400 today, 4, 425. Full set, a whole to do, right? All of it. It's not aftermarket case. I wish it was aftermarket case. Yeah, the original. You know what I mean? But as is, I fear. I figured the watch. I talked to two, three guys, Christine, everybody, like 200, 200. I mean, 200 is 200, 250. Yeah, yeah, 250 to 300. It's worth, right? Then depending on how much work you put into it, there's still money left to eat. We're still trying to figure out an approach how to have our client less hurt on an iced out anniversary paddock. So I'm just talking to a few people in the industry to see what can be done. We already went from a cost of $100,000 to fix it to 40. Well, that's, what, that's what one guy said. Yeah, but that was, he's, said saying, he's, saying, he's saying 40. Right. He's saying for $40,000 it can they be done. Is that case? No, everything. The whole job. He's saying about $30,000 to pull everything out, fill everything in, and then bring it back to life another 10000 uh, to get it back to its original form. What if you just, my wife so if the price is 40, how much would the case cost to do? So everything together is 40, then the case will probably cost 10. Right? No, 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 he's saying 40 altogether. We need to have a conversation with him. Got enough information there, I'm gonna have to call the client and tell him that, look, possibly purchase a brand new bracelet to go with the watch, take out all the diamonds, laser the case, get it back to its original format. This could be a project. I was like, I'm like, it would be crazy if I see these guys here today. <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> what you mean by a lot? What's up, bro? <laughs> Brendan. Brendan? Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you too, man. Uh, can I get something sold to me? Can you help me out? Oh my god, I have a whole professional here. No, this that's, is great. That's, that's the professional. Take advantage. Sir, do you mind uh, assisting me here? I am. Uh, then I'm retired. I, uh, <laughs> Just I add, no, I no. I, I did all my numbers and everything. You don't have to give me specifics. You don't have to kill their deal and their profits. I just. I don't like know. I, I don't know how to be unbiased in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a little, shark. A little different. <laughs> How do, how, do you be, how do you become unbiased in a situation like this, Adrian? Yeah. Well, at so, least, um, so there's Ariel that I've known for 20 these years. These are my friends for many years. Yeah. You know, I want to help you all at the yeah. same time. It's like, it's yeah. a, we're, we're, Okay, you know, so at least like, like sell, sellability. Yeah. At least all not numbers, right. nothing. Just yeah. what should I... A lot of stuff that you buy, mm -hmm. obviously the stuff that you sell. The stuff that you sell is the type of customer base you have. Okay. Right? So if you're going to continue with four digit days, that's the type of customer you're going to have. You want to step things up, right? You want to buy... You know, Oyster Flex Daytonas or, or two-ton stuff or 41 millimeter stuff or so many other subs, you're going to gain that clientele. I get you. Right. Yeah. More often, more often, right? Yeah. So, that's how you go that's, ahead and that, Exactly. I have about 90 to play with, uh, with you that being business credit so. Uh, so I know you're going to drop a fat fee on it and then everything else um, is cash. I'll be buying. 16570 Explorers, 216 Explorers, 226 Explorers, because I think that their price point, I think that they're not that expensive. Like, you know, a Pepsi is $20,000, right? And this is 8000 to 12000 penny condition. This is nice price point stuff. Not that huge of a premium over list, and it's a great product. Right? I'm looking for stuff like that. 
We get a lot of requests for James Cameron. We get obviously a lot of requests for Oyster Flex, they told us. So a random kid walked in and asked me what he thinks he should buy. The problem with that is, is I don't know his budget. I don't know who he sells to. I don't know what his appetite is. I don't know what his overhead is. So these are questions that I can't really answer. So the best thing that I can do for him is show him every single piece in there and why he should or shouldn't buy it. Your end customer. You're going to buy a watch from Ariel for $5 today. You're going to go try to sell it for $5, $5 $56 to whom? My goal is retail. Retail. Yep. Okay. Online? Yeah. Online is a little tough today, right? Because yeah. e-commerce is not... Instagram. Yeah. Instagram is where it's at. And uh, Jimmy, so, because a lot of kids, they ask me for advice. Box. They're like, listen, uh, you know, how do I get started? How do I do this? And I mean, the first thing I tell them is, you know, go to trade yeah. shows, go to the blog, go Boston somewhere where there's a ton of watches and there's a lot of transactions being done and just pay attention, right? You don't have to buy anything. The trick to be successful today is to build enough of an audience for yourself to where it becomes a retail business from your get go. Last two and a half years, we saw a thousand people get into the business and a thousand people get out of this business. Why? Because they were selling to each other. It's a, it's a lot easier for you to go to Yelp, buy this watch for X, and then come to a guy like me, even though I may know it came from me, but if the price works for me, I'll still buy it, right? Flip it, make you five, ten percent, but that's not the real business. If your ultimate goal is not to make a quick dollar, I would ultimately concentrate on how am I going to be that guy. You live in a neighborhood, wherever it might be. You live in an area. If you're that guy, right, in Jersey, wherever you may live, and you just sort of spread that world by showing a few things, and again, it's, it's all social media today. There's no, build a website, I'm not gonna do much for you, you know what I mean? Plus, the, the best part about our business is that if you here with him, and he give you the access and the time to photograph half of a showcase, right, and you know that the market price is there, to me, it's more valuable to sell a watch at zero profit but to gain a client right. than to make a bigger profit, let's say wholesale or elsewhere, somebody that's never gonna come back. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's like kind of like the best advice I can give to somebody. If you're able to yeah, buy, if you're able to buy this posture for X and you're able to flip it and make a thousand dollars, and if you can take that thousand dollars, like everybody's gonna eat, but if you can take eight hundred dollars out of that and invest it back into some sort of a form of marketing, be it running an ad on Instagram, be it uh, advertising elsewhere, be it getting your name and your product out there. Yeah. This business is built on flipping. Yeah, we have hundreds of watches. What do you think? I don't call Ariel. He doesn't call me. Hey, do you have this? Do you have that? It happens all day, every day in all the chats, right? You can't just do retail. It's tough. You have to do a little well, bit of both. Roman, when did you start? Well, how old were you? Uh, I started, it was a part-time gig when I was, I was in corporate world. I worked in the city at Deutsche Bank. So for me, it was a part-time gig that quickly transpired into something. I said, well, wait a minute. A few months go by, I'm like, I just made as much money as I did working for the bank. I was making $125,000 a year 20 years ago. I was 20 years ago. I started, too. 20 years ago. No. That's, you know, it's a little more today. And again, I got lucky because I started strictly retail because there was really not a whole lot of wholesale. There was no WhatsApp groups. There was no Facebook groups. There was no Facebook, right? Wholesale was here. This is why... I today, started wholesale. Yeah, today you walk down the street and you see empty windows on the block. Back when I started, you had to pay, what, a buck fifty, a hundred fifty thousand? Just key money just to have that window. So while we have a bit of a drive to get to the party, there's someone else you may know that's currently in New York City doing a little bit of haggling. I'm back. I'm coming stronger than ever. Roba, how much is this bracelet? How much is this? 13 carats. How much is this bracelet? It's 13 okay. so I need profit. Okay, how much uh, in diamonds here? 30 carats, you say. I don't know, you need to count. right there. I don't got, I don't, listen, I don't guarantee diamonds. He told me 13, you need to count. Okay, let me do the weights. I'm looking at this uh, vintage Sterlet bracelet. It's a nice bracelet, but uh, they're asking too much money. And they're lying on the way too. There is no way there is 12 carats. 13 actually. 13 carats. This is the kind of things that I like to buy. Yeah, this is a good deal also. 290 a carat, gold. 40 a gram. Big look. 25 carats. That I can guarantee. That I bought. I want something. I want better goods. I'm interested in this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 28. L look at it. Look at it. You don't think it's a 10 point? 10 point? Not even close. Rafa, ты можешь предложить? I want to buy this for 12,000. Can you call him? I'm interested. I need pieces like this. Call him up, tell him. I'll pay 13,000. If you can get him down, I'll pay 13,000 for this. This I got from a guy. His cost apparently is 12, so I don't know. 12 what? 12, 12 cents. He sent us a big package, like $2 million worth. Price this. This will come out to like 5.50 a carat, I think. It's 14 carat gold. Uh, the styles are like 
garbage styles. Show me the other stuff, bigger piece. No. No. Yogi. Rafaj, I understand, I can't sell this stuff. 580 Fahrenheit. Show me a show. Five put it, put it, show me the other stuff. Okay, I need five stuff like this. Okay with you? I'll take a look. I'll, 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 huh? I'll buy from me first. Okay. You know, big time. You guys should know it's not the, not the price. It's the hand that works. Huh? It's not the, it's not the, the price. It's the hand that works with you guys. That means I have a good hand. A very good hand. I'm very. Some I'm, of these things I'm, I'm never. I'm very happy for I, you. I paid cheap. I never thought I would pay these prices, but. For some but reason you give it to me and I sell it. This is the stuff that you want, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's start with this. Whatever is here. This is a Spacerite garnet. This is very good. Price. 500. Take it. You see, this guy is very easy. Because I'm easy with him too. There's 20 carats of emeralds. There's $2,000 in gold. I have stuff like this I can never move. Just okay. Just the quality. All right. How many carat aqua? Aqua is 26 carats. It's not bad. You sure? Yes. It's a fair price. 500. 550! So, remember rule number she one. She's the best. If you buy from them first, they buy from you after. Rafa, show me your stuff, the bigger pieces. Show me. Show me! I need some big pieces for the Vegas show. I need some big sign pieces. The emerald set, you think you move for me? The emerald set? No. I They're all characters? You have 20, well this guy I can vouch for. How many carry total is it? I think about 28 something. 15, 17. That's for the round, and how about the, how about the emerald? Oh, it's 20, 28, 20. Oi, what's the Wait, price? If I tell you 1800 a carry, would that make sense? There's a I ones, there's white, there's yellow, it's a, everything it's has a, a mix. True, true. But it's a mix, uh, somebody had leftovers, you know, from yesterday. Okay, how much? They had it? lunch and leftovers, they, they send it to you. And how much is it worth though? How much your character is worth today? How much 16, can you buy character? 1600. Person? Like this, I want 1600. 1600, right? Yeah. Okay. No problem. That's a good price. Let's see, 1600. That 28.18. You do 1650? Do 1600, I'll buy the bracelet. I, it's a big show for Vegas show. What do you think? 1618. What? Hi, hi. 1608. 18, 18, 18, you have to have life. No, no, it's not that life. Mazal, you know why you have the best prices? Because you buy from me. That's true also. I was going to buy a lot more bigger pieces in New York because we have a big show coming up in Vegas. That being said, back to our uh, celebrity, Roman Scharf. We are headed to Watch Finders, uh, watch people get together thing, I'm not sure. It's going to be a big crowd and I like to hear myself speak, so it's perfect. It's a win-win and I got a reel with me, so, you know. What happened last year in the market? Because it all went a bit weird, didn't it? Well. Does this actually work or is this just for that? It's just for that, yeah. It's just for that. <laughs> <laughs> the best one of these. It's, it's much, much easier. Uh, He's got mic budget. Look at that. So first of all, Andrew, thank you for the invite. Uh, I'm actually honored to see your face because I'm used to this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, let's acknowledge the fact that this is a guy that I watched before I even knew what YouTube was or doing YouTube, number one. Of course, I, we only got to see his hands. I actually thought he was rather bad looking until I saw actually his face and realized he's actually a pretty handsome guy. It's not just his hands, right? I thought you were just a hand model. But uh, the market, let's talk about the market. A lot of cool things happened last year. Notice I say cool, it's because there was a shift in the market, right? And what ended up happening, everybody got scared. Oh my God, the market is going down. But what really went down is the pieces that got out of hand in terms of price, right? There were certain pieces which probably made up less than 5% of the entire watch market that all of a sudden went to pricing that we couldn't believe. Started with a speech to a bunch of watch enthusiasts that obviously had some questions and going on to seeing what's on people's wrists. That's what we're all about. What's your name? Lewis. What are you wearing? Grand Seiko Chronograph, Spring Drive Chronograph GMT. Why? Um, I'm an engineer, so it does everything that I want to. It's my most comfortable watch in my collection and I have a Rolex Pepsi. Um, it's titanium to super light. It, it's huge, but it actually wears pretty well. And I can swim with it. Uh, so, and, okay. It's the brand that almost killed all the other guys back in 1969. It's, yeah. What I like about this one is this is the, this is the one, even though people like Grand Seiko a lot these days, nobody likes the chronograph GMTs, except for me. 
and so it's actually my favorite watch in my collection. Listen, it's, you buy what you like, first and foremost. What do you mean? I'm wearing a Patek 5013. This is one of the first uh, metal repeater retrograde professionals that they made, back to what I discussed earlier, that 80s and 90s time period. Explorer 2, why did you go with the Explorer 2? Um, it's the perfect size for me, everything I'm looking for, and the new ones are just hideous. And I think it's also one of the most legible watches out there. Yes, I agree. What's your name? Darshan, from New Jersey. Uh, pleasure meeting you, Darshan. Nice meeting you. What are you wearing on your wrist? Oh, just a Tissot race, simple basic. Why did you pick that watch? Uh, aesthetically, it's very pleasing. I was attracted to it. Didn't have nothing to do with anything else, and been a fan of the brand and the style. And I'm looking to expand in this direction. I think Tiso makes some of the most wonderful watches, and what I love about them is that it allows somebody to come in at an entry level and actually enjoy a mechanical watch. So for me, Tiso is the brand. People always ask me, "Give me a watch under a thousand," and I tell them. Tiso is the way to go. Oh, really? That's the, that's the brand that I recommend. Andrew, thank you so much for the invite to the Watch Finder get together. I don't know what the official title is. I had a wonderful time, met a lot of great people. I love these type of events and I love doing these type of events because I get to interface with you guys face to face rather than the camera that's pointing at me right now. With that being said, I hope you liked the episode. Don't forget, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all those beautiful things that help this channel grow. We'll see you next week.